Okay, I think we have a critical mass of attendees, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Samantha Neary, and I'm a career counselor here in the School of Public Health, and I am thrilled to be joined today uh, by Liz Creel from the uh, John Snow Institute. Inco is it Incorporation or Institute? Uh, well, it's John Snow Inc. is our private sector entity, and then our nonprofit is uh, JSI Research and Training Institute. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we'll go with JSI then. Yeah. Uh, and so we're super excited. Uh, Liz has a wealth of, of information to share with us about JSI. And so uh, we are going to go ahead and get started with our conversation. Um, but before we do that, just a few housekeeping notes. Um, if you all could uh, keep your um, audio on mute uh, so that Liz and I can engage in the conversation. And then if you have questions throughout, feel free to uh, pop them in the, in the chat. We have some colleagues from career services that are going to be monitoring the questions and we'll leave some time at the end of our uh, conversations for questions from the group as well. Um, and then before we get into uh, the questions that we have prepared, we'd love to just hear a little bit about who's on the line. So if you could quickly uh, in the chat box, just chat box, excuse me, just let us know uh, the concentration uh, area that you're studying or your, your area of interest, whether that be uh, global health, health policy, um, any of our um, larger scale concentrations. We want to just get a sense of who's on the line because Jon Snow just does such a breadth of work within the field of public health um, that uh, we want to make sure that we're tailoring it effectively. And so let's see. Yeah, so if you all just want to um, pop that into the chat, health policy, maternal and child health, global health epi. Okay, we see a lot of epi folks. Mm -hmm. That's great. Health policy management, um, design and evalu evaluation. Great. Uh, let's see. So I think if I had to... Um, kind of uh, source this overall, I would say that the majority of folks that we have on the line are epi, but we definitely have um, a sprinkling of other interests as well. I saw quite a few maternal and child health mm -hmm. um, monitoring design and evaluation. Um, so I would say, uh, you know, it, it runs the gamut of interests in public health uh, Liz. And so I think that would be, uh, uh, that's going to be super interesting for our conversation today. Um, so why don't we uh, go ahead and start. If you could just, uh, Liz, tell us a little bit about you and your uh, role at Jon Snow. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. Nice to see you um, virtually. I'm sorry that we can't do this in person, but hopefully if we do this again, maybe next year. Um, yeah, I'm uh, my present role right now. I'm a senior technical advisor um, in the um, international division with um, JSI, and I work on the nonprofit side. And presently, I serve as the JSI team lead for a project called um, Stop Spillover. That's looking at the um, how to mitigate the spread and amplification of zoonotic viruses from animals to people. And we're focusing on five um, specific viruses. Um, and with a focus on working in 10 priority countries in Africa and Asia. And the big, this is the project, a five-year project funded by the U.S. Agency for International Development. It comes out of the Office of Pandemic and Emerging Threats. And um, there's a big focus on capacity development, um, gender, which is terrific, and um, also, of course, surveillance, mapping, and modeling, social behavior change, and then looking kind of across uh, what we call like really the spillover ecosystem. So looking how at how the different One Health pieces um, all interact. So that's animal health, human health, and environmental health. 
So that's kind of, that's in a nutshell um, what I'm working on. And because I'm, JSI is, um, our areas are social behavior change, um, really health information systems and digital health. And then also um, a big focus on, I mean, we're doing a lot in terms of communications as well. Um, and Tufts University is the what's called the prime for this particular project. And that's really with a lead from the vet school, but then also their schools of public health, nutrition, engineering, and uh, their Fletcher School um, for Law and Diplomacy are all engaged in some way with this project. Um, and we have about, gosh, 15 partners overall, which is a, a large number of partners, um, and JSI and then Tetratech, which is a large engineering firm that has an international development um, unit that's based in Burlington, Vermont. We are major subpartners, but then we also have academic partners, uh, UCLA, the University of Glasgow in Scotland, uh, University of Washington, several uh, local um, organizations, Right Trek Africa, which is doing a lot in terms of outcome mapping which is um, an evaluation approach that's a participatory evaluation approach. And then I think importantly, we also work with two regional um, One Health networks in Asia and Africa. One is called um, Siahun, that's based in Thailand and Bangkok. And the other one is Afrahun that's based in uh, Kampala, Uganda. Wow. That is awesome. That's a lot. And so something for, for everyone, I guess, and lots <laughs> yeah. of opportunity for kind of cross collaboration. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I mean, I couldn't imagine a more timely period in history to do this type of work. Uh, absolutely. And so, um, you know, I'd love to hear a little bit about uh, the, the specifics of, of some of your work. And so, uh, though your organization's mission is uh, better healthcare outcomes for all. And so what do you think has been the best project that you've worked on thus far to accomplish that mission? Okay, wow. Um, well, I've been with JSI now for 10 years and have always worked um, in the international health sector because that, that's my background. And that's actually what I studied at GW. I studied um, international health promotion. Um, and I think for me, the best, my best project was probably the one that I just concluded, which was called Advancing Partners and Communities. And that was a seven year USAID funded project that really focused on community health. Uh, we worked in 40 countries and we had four areas uh, that we worked in. There was a big focus on uh, family planning and reproductive health. Um, also the um, post Ebola response in West Africa, um, HIV really looking at working with um, what are called key populations. And then we also did um, some work in disability and inclusion, but we also had a big focus on, I, I think I mentioned community health. So working to really um, enable, empower a lot of um, stakeholder organizations and NGOs through um, provision of grants, lots of different sizes of grants. Um, I think we had over, gosh, close to 150 by the end of the project. Um, and I think the reason that I, that project resonated so strongly with me is one, um, I think the community health focus, I mean, really working closely with community-based organizations, district level government entities. Um, and I think, um, and then for me with, I have a, kind of a background in two different technical areas. Um, one, I started in public health and environmental health, but then moved more into um, kind of environmental health, infectious disease, and then moved more actually into family planning, reproductive health and, and ARM and CH more broadly. So I think the work that we did in um, family planning kind of building and in supporting uptake of family planning methods 
Um, I mean, we worked across what's called the family planning method mix, but we did a lot in terms of promotion of injectable contraceptives. And that was, um, that. I mean, it was just, uh, that was very rewarding. And I think we saw a lot of impact from that work. And then also, I think our work in responding to the post Ebola um, situation, where we did a lot of work to look at addressing stigma of Ebola survivors. Um, that was a big focus of our work. So again, and we worked for that work, we were working in Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone that had been the hardest hit by the epidemic then. Um, so that was very much, um, you know, on the ground with a lot of demonstrated impact. So, yeah. That is so awesome. And you mentioned uh, there being kind of a, a direct line between your work now and what you studied at, at GW, um, in a sense. And so can you tell us a little bit about how your academic experience prepared you for your job and what skills you believe contributed to your success at JSI? Sure. Um, let me think about that. Um, well, I would, when I did my MPH, I did it also, I did it over three years and I did it while I was working. So I actually started, um, I had an internship with JSI when I was um, with GW, actually working on um, a project called, um, it was measure evaluation, but I was working on doing a, um, I did my final project with the environmental health project looking at diarrheal disease prevention in a community-based environment in um, Samaipata, Bolivia. So I think that um, community orientation was very... Um, clear, a, a clear interest for me at the beginning. And I think that application of, of environmental health, which I studied along with health promotion when I was at GW, those were kind of my two areas together. So I think having a grounding in um, environmental health and coursework I took there, and then also um, work that I had done in health promotion, kind of on social behavior change and communication. Um, I think um, that training was useful and helpful. Um, and then I think, you know, with the GW curriculum, I mean, I think, as you know, you know, there are all the requirements with EPI, biostats, um, and then health promotion and all of the health systems focus. I think having really a broad suite of those classes, I think, made me feel like a pretty strong um, overall global health professional. Um, I would say that for global health, it's really useful and helpful to have, um, you know, in-country um, experience, whether it's through internships or the Peace Corps or through, um, you know, another type of experience. Um, I think what other requisite skills are really important? I think, you know, communications, um, collaboration, having really, um, I think being willing to work hard, to work outside of your box, if you will, not to be afraid of taking new, taking on new challenges and, you know, constantly learning. Um, and let me think, I'm trying to think of what else now. Um, well, that's what comes immediately to mind. Yeah. Well, I love that. And just not to be afraid and then keep on learning. I think that's, you know, that's such valuable advice and definitely appreciate that. And so um, I think we're going to kind of switch gears a little bit because you talked about uh, this, the value of in-country in experience for global health, which is something we definitely see across the board. But now with COVID, you know, it's presenting obviously significant <laughs> challenges, uh, to say the least, with getting that in-country experience. And so how do you think COVID overall has affected your work, um, particularly internationally? 
Well, it's interesting for my present project, um, we have done, the project just started in October and we have done all of our project startup online, which is project startup is challenging to begin with, but to do it online has been really challenging. Um, but with that said, I think, um, I think what I found is that it's amazing actually to be able to start up um, kind of virtually and we've been successful. We've been, um, the project is we're in, um, gosh, entering, I guess, our seventh month of operation now. And we've been working on our year one work plan and then country level work plans for the country, our priority countries for year one. Um, so I think that six, seven month period has been a lot of putting systems in place, making sure we are hiring the right people, getting people together as a team, um, to figure out our different approaches, um, developing a good relationship with our client, which is USAID. Um, and then also, um, so I would say that, you know, working in a COVID environment definitely has challenges, but there are also opportunities there. I think to become more tech savvy, to um, not be deterred by doing things virtually. Um, and there's a lot that I think, um, I think one thing, I mean, we, I think we all need to be mindful of our work hours in a COVID environment because you could work 24 seven and there's nobody there saying, you know, it's time to go home now. <laughs> so that, that's um, both for the good or the bad. I think there's a lot more flexibility. I think certainly learning in the digital space, I think all can also lend itself to creativity. Um, in terms of kind of learning by doing and not, again, that, that notion of not being afraid to try new things. And it's okay to make mistakes because everybody is dealing with Zoom and trying to figure it out. And um, I, I do think that there is, I mean, for JSI as an organization as a whole, for our field programs and country, we have lost. Um, unfortunately, um, staff from COVID. So there's been the personal impact of losing, um, you know, staff in, in many of the countries of which we've worked in. And I think that's been really tough, certainly. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. And we also, JSI is an organization, we've also responded to COVID um, with different types of programs. We've adapted some of our programs and done um, more in terms of contract tracing, um, you know, using mobile applications to help with that. Um, I think uh, working with other organizations to coordinate around provision of um, personal protective equipment and other types of support. Um, and then I think um, yeah, and then I think also because my project, I mean, the coronaviruses are among the virus priority viruses, so that we're kind of looking at. So I think we also, we as a project feel that we're also helping to um, head off, if you will, you know, potentially the next possible pandemic, you know, from any of those five group of viruses. And these are priority viruses that USAID selected for us. 